Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, June 20th, Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. I'll be talking more about that in a minute. It's a beautiful day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Very nice temperature this morning, somewhere in the 70s. I think those days of waking up in the low 50s are over, at least I hope they are. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the weather. <laughs> Uh, I want to, before I get into the Father's Day stuff, I want to send out a big thank you to uh, Flat Cat Piper and Lady Fire. Man, they did a fantastic job uh, guest hosting on Friday night. A lot of you guys showed up. I watched the replay. I didn't watch the Friday night stream, but I did watch the replay. Uh, saw a lot of the, the folks that uh, normally show up for my live streams in the chat. That was great. Uh, may, maybe you already do that anyway, but hopefully you will in the future for them because they are just a fantastic couple and boy they did a good job in fact i'm a little worried because i think they could easily step in and, and take over friday night so um if i retire we we got uh we got the next uh next host without question they did a fantastic job so thank you flat cat piper and lady fire it was much appreciated and i uh I just took the night off. You know, I, I uh, we were supposed to be in Pittsburgh this past week. We weren't because of my heart thing, and, and everything's fine with that. I see the cardiologist this Thursday. Uh, haven't heard anything, so I'll assume no news is good news. Um, and I'm feeling pretty good. So all, all is all is going well. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get to go to Pittsburgh, but, you know, I did take it easy this week. I, I did kind of take a break. Um, didn't spend a lot of time down here. Uh, I did spend Friday night down here, which was different. All right, so it's Father's Day, and I so to get into my Father's Day uh, ramble here, I, I got to talk about what I did yesterday. So yesterday, so I have a two thousand one, no, two thousand eleven. He's confused all the time. I have a 2011 Hyundai Elantra. It's an Elantra Touring, so it's the kind, the one that kind of looks like a station wagon. Fantastic car, best best car I've ever owned. Uh, can't be beat for fishing. You know, got plenty of storage space to put your rods and your tackle and everything in there and just take off. And I love that car. So when uh, you know we got. What's the, I don't even know what the word is. We didn't get shut down. We didn't get locked in. I didn't go to work. You know, when I, when I was work, started working from home, I kind of stopped driving it because most of the time when I go out these days, my wife is with me and she likes to drive her car. Uh, she, By the way, she must drive. So she gets car sick if she's a passenger. So she has to be the driver. And she likes her car better than my car. So we take her car and that's fine. So my car gets, we got a one car garage with a driveway. You can't fit anything in the one-car garage because that's where my wife keeps stuff. So my car is parked right up at the garage door, and then her car is behind mine. So if I'm going out by myself, I'm not going to move her car. Just yeah, you know, I just take hers and come back. So to make a long story short, the car has been sitting in the driveway for over a year. I haven't started it. You know, and, and that's my own stupid fault. I, I should have gone out and started it every couple of weeks and, you know, just kept it. I didn't. And, of course, the battery died. You know, it went completely flat. So, I said, okay, I, I'm going to, I thought about, you know, do I just call AAA and get them to jump it or get out jumper cables and see if I can reach them around the, the car because don't have room to bring the other one up. Uh, buy a battery charger, which is something I've been wanting, but yeah, how often are you going to use a battery charger? And they're, they're ex a good one's expensive, good batteries expensive. Uh, and I was looking at AutoZone's website and it turns out AutoZone, which is one of the local auto supply shops here. And there's one within walking distance of my house. Uh, they do free battery testing and they also do free battery charging. And I thought, wow, well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the battery out, put it in my wife's car, drive over to AutoZone, test it, charge it. My wife immediately, because she has such faith in me, said, are you going to be able to get the battery out? Now, in her defense, prior to this car, I had a 2001 Elantra. 
That's why I always get them confused. It's a 2001 versus a 2011. And this car, I couldn't get the battery out. I, I, I tried. I could not get the battery out. It was, it was buried under stuff. I mean, it had a bracket across the top of it. And to get to that bracket, you had to basically remove part of the side. Uh, I, I don't know how you get it out. I honestly don't know. I tried. I tried, and it got to the point where I said, you know, if I take any more stuff out, I'm not going to be able to get it back together. So I gave up on that. But I felt wounded when she said, are you sure you're going to be able to get the battery out? I said, of course I'm going to get the battery out. And then I thought about it, and I said, well, it depends. I, I don't know how the battery's in this car. I, I haven't really looked under the hood very much because I, I don't have to. And I said, jokingly, if it's anything like my 72 Plymouth Gold Duster, I'll have it out in three minutes. Well, I went out and sure enough, whoever designed this battery setup uh, must have been involved in the 72 Plymouth Gold Duster <laughs> because it was really easy to get out. The only catch was they've got these new clamps so it doesn't that you don't screw on the side anymore. They screw from the top and kind of pinch down. I got to figure that out. But you have one little bracket at the bottom holding it in place. You take that out, three bolts, and then you're ready to go. So got it out, took it over. They put it on the tester. Yeah, it's zero percent. They put it on the charger. It would not charge. Uh, I wouldn't get above nine volts. Just wouldn't. So okay, I got any new battery. That was a shock. There's sticker shock there. I had no idea batteries had gotten so expensive, but what are you going to do? Bought the new battery, brought it home. It starts to rain. I said, ah, it's not raining hard. I'm going to get this thing in. I popped the hood, dropped the battery in, connect everything up. Got a little wet. Sat down in the car, put the key in. Instantly started, purred like a kitten, couldn't be happier. So I buttoned everything up, went in the house, and declared it a success. Now, as I was doing this, as, as I was in particular, as I was putting the battery back, you put the new battery in, and it's raining, and I'm, you know, handling slippery wrenches because they're getting wet and all that, and it wasn't an ordeal, but... I started to think about the times that I helped my dad fix his car. My dad, he's, he's still, still with us, thank God, um, and I hope he's here for a long time. He just turned 77 uh, on Tuesday, so he's you know just had a happy birthday, and now he's having, a, hopefully, a happy Father's Day. Uh, 77, which in my family is really old. We don't tend to live that long. <laughs> so I have, I have high hopes that I got his, his genes for, for longevity. And he's doing really well. You know, he's got diabetes. He's got a few medical issues. But by and large, he's, he's mobile. He, uh, he's relatively independent. I mean, he's kind of dependent on my sister that lives there. Um, well, she lives down the driveway. She has her own house. Uh, he's dependent on her because he doesn't like to do the insulin injections and things like that, but, you know, he, he could if he really had to. So, my dad worked hard. He, he, I think today people would say he was the kind of father that wasn't around very much, but I never thought of it that way. I thought of it as he was the kind of father that worked a lot, and he worked a lot because he had to. You know, he had three kids, and a wife, and we all had to go to school, we all had to get clothed, we all had to eat, bills to pay, everything else. And it wasn't easy. You know, we, we never wanted for anything. Ne never, never. But we didn't always have the latest and the greatest. You know, I didn't have every new thing that came along. I, I had an old wooden hockey stick that when everybody else had a fancy new plastic one, you know, that kind of thing. Do they even still make wooden hockey sticks? 
No idea. By the way, I was the world's worst hockey player, but that's a story for another time. So we didn't have a lot, and when my dad would buy a car, you know, he probably bought three cars in the in, in all the time that I lived with him, um, and you'd keep that car running until you couldn't. You know, that just was it was a very big expense. Once you got it paid off, it was a huge relief because then you had that extra money. And if it needed an alternator, it needed a battery, it needed a thermostat, whatever it needed, we did it. Um, we didn't do brakes just because we, we lived in the city of Philadelphia. There wasn't really a convenient place to get under the car and ever get the car jacked up, take the tires off and all that. I mean, we could have, but we, we usually let the professionals do brakes. But pretty much everything else we did. I can remember taking a tire off and rolling it to the gas station to, to get it uh, patched, you know, that, that kind of thing. And I remember all these times standing outside over the engine of a car, holding a flashlight for my dad, and thinking, why are we doing this? Why can't this wait till tomorrow? I can remember... One, th one very, very clear memory I have of, of him working on cars was, I don't remember what the car was, but it was cold. There was ice and snow on the ground. And he had to change the thermostat. And I remember seeing his hands as, as he broke the thermostat housing away from the, uh, whatever it's attached to. And the antifreeze comes running out, the cold antifreeze, because the car hadn't been running all over his hands and, and thinking, my God, it's so cold. <laughs> but he dried his hands off and rubbed them together and put the new thermostat in. And, you know, at the time I didn't understand it. You know, I was thinking, why, why can't this wait? Why, why do we have to do this when it's cold? I was young. I was you know, maybe eight, nine years old, maybe, maybe 12 at the oldest. The reason it couldn't wait was that my dad had to go to work. He had to go to work the next day. And he would work nights, and he would work weekends, and he would work double shifts. All to support his family. All to make sure that I could go to school. And that when I went to school, I had shoes that didn't have holes in them and <laughs> such. I mean, it sounds silly, probably by, by modern standards, but at the time, it wasn't. It really wasn't. And he took care of us. He did what needed to be done. And it didn't matter what the personal cost was. It didn't matter that he really wanted to just relax and watch TV or he really wanted to watch that Phillies game tonight or whatever. It didn't matter. He had to get that done. And I learned from that. You know, I when I look at my myself today, I... I have a similar work ethic. Now, I don't have the same kind of job, and I get paid a much better rate than he did, and I don't have kids, so I've got it a lot easier than he did. But I don't take very many sick days. I mean, I have to be really sick to take a sick day. I never leave work at 5 o'clock. I often work on the weekends. I'm trying not to. I'm trying as... A, as I move toward the retirement, I'm trying to relax more so that I have less stress, so that I have a longer life. If I'm going to buy something, I think about my wife first. I think about what she needs. I think about what the house needs, um, what bills might need to be paid. Most of the time it's not important, but I think about it. And I learned all that from my dad. You know, I, I learned that from, from watching him. And I guess the, the thing I'm trying to, to get to here, and this is, this is sort of a, a message to all you dads out there, especially the newer dads that you know, have the, the very little children. And that message is that they're watching. 
You know, kids are, are like sponges and they're watching everything you do. And it might not mean anything to them today. But someday, it's going to click. They're going to say, oh, now I understand why dad did this. Now I understand why dad acted the way he did. I am in a situation where I really want to get angry and yell, but I remember how my dad used to approach these situations. That's going to just click, and, and it's going to form the person that they become. I think a lot of us try to behave in a certain way because that's how we want to be thought of. And certainly, you know, you want to, you want to act around your children because someday your child might be sitting in a basement smoking a pipe and talking about you and you want them to say nice things. Yes. <laughs> but you're also forming that child. You know, you're, 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 you're deciding for them how they're going to see the world just through your actions. That's really important. You know, you, you, you can... So I, I get called doctor, as I, I am. Uh, I get called sir, because I'm old. I get called mister. Nobody's ever going to call me dad. That's not something that you can earn. It's something that you... Are thrust into. It's a title that's thrust upon you. And it's one that you have to live up to. You know, I don't have to be a doctor tomorrow. Nobody will notice. <laughs> Believe me, nobody will notice. I don't have to be sir to anyone. But if I was a dad, I would have to be a dad. It's a big responsibility. And I'm thankful that I had a great example and continue to have a great example in my father and I know that many if not all of you feel similar um, and even even the folks that maybe would say ah, oh, my dad wasn't that great think about it there's something there there's something there you learned from it it shaped the person you are That's really it. I hope you all have a have a happy Father's Day, guys, and uh, I hope that was interesting to you. Now, uh, this Friday I'm back. I know you missed me. I hope you missed me. <laughs> I'm back, and we have a great guest. We've got Doug Owen from the Cargo Hold. This is not Doug. Uh, this is a Springer Spaniel. I know Doug's fine, fond of them. Uh, I, I don't have a picture of Doug yet, which is my fault because I haven't emailed to ask for it yet. But uh, it's a nice placeholder. I'm sure Doug will appreciate the dog. <laughs> but Doug is uh, the owner of the Cargo Hold, and he is one of the most knowledgeable people about pipes and tobacco that you will ever run into. So we're going to have a great time uh, getting to know Doug a bit better and uh, learning from him. So tune in Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. I'll look forward to seeing you there. I'll probably be back on Wednesday with something or the other. And uh, until then, have a happy Father's Day, everyone. Until we talk again, I'll look forward to speaking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.